A general strike or mass strike is a strike action in which a substantial proportion of the total labor force in a city, region, or country participates. General strikes are characterized by the participation of workers in a multitude of workplaces, and tend to involve entire communities. General strikes first occurred in the mid-19th century, and have characterized many historically important strikes. History. Antiquity An early predecessor of the general strike may have been the Secessia Plebis in ancient Rome. In the Outline of History, H. G. Wells recorded, "...the general strike of the plebeians, the plebeians seem to have invented the strike, which now makes its first appearance in history." Their first strike occurred because they saw with indignation their friends, who had often served the state bravely in the legions, thrown into chains and reduced to slavery at the demand of patrician creditors." Wells noted that, t he patricians made a mean use of their political advantages to grow rich through the national conquests at the expense not only of the defeated enemy, but of the poorer plebeian." The plebeians, who were expected to obey the laws, but were not allowed to know the laws which patricians were able to recite from memory, were successful, winning the right to appeal any injustice to the General Assembly. In 450 BC, in a concession resulting from the rebellion of the plebeians, the laws of Rome were written for all to peruse. <laughs> Modern era The general strike action only became a feature of the political landscape with the onset of the Industrial Revolution. For the first time in history, large numbers of people were members of the industrial working class, they lived in cities and exchanged their labor for payment. By the 1830s, when the Chartist movement was at its peak, a true and widespread workers consciousness was beginning to awaken in England. The first theorist to formulate and popularize the idea of a general strike for the purpose of political reform was the radical pamphleteer William Benbow. Closely involved with planning the attempted Blanketeers' protest march by Lancashire weavers in March 1817, he became an associate of William Cobbett and passed his time, "...agitating the laboring classes at their trades meetings and club houses." On 28 January 1832 Benbow published a pamphlet entitled Grand National Holiday and Congress of the Productive Classes. Benbow began to advocate direct and even violent action for political reform, in particular he advanced his idea for a «national holiday» and «national convention». By this he meant an extended period of general strike by the working classes, which would be a sacred or holy action hence, holy day during which time local committees would keep the peace and elect delegates to a national convention or congress, which would agree the future direction of the nation. The striking workers were to support themselves with savings and confiscated parish funds, and by demanding contributions from rich people, Benbow's idea of a grand national holiday was adopted by the Chartist Congress of 1839, Benbow having spent time in Manchester during 1838–9 promoting the cause and his pamphlet, in 1842 the demands for fairer wages and conditions across many different industries finally exploded into the first modern general strike the 1842 general strike. After the second Chartist petition was presented to Parliament in April 1842 and rejected, the strike began in the coal mines of Staffordshire, England, and soon spread through Britain affecting factories, mills in Lancashire and coal mines from Dundee to South Wales and Cornwall. Instead of being a spontaneous uprising of the mutinous masses, the strike was politically motivated and was driven by a hard-headed agenda to win concessions. Probably as much as half of the then industrial workforce were on strike at its peak, over 500,000 men. The local leadership marshalled a growing working class tradition to politically organize their followers to mount an articulate challenge to the capitalist, political establishment. The mass abandonment of plantations by black slaves and poor whites during the American Civil War has, controversially, been considered a general strike. In his classic history Black Reconstruction in America, W. E. B. Du Bois describes this mass abandonment in precisely these terms Transforming itself suddenly from a problem of abandoned plantations and slaves captured while being used by the southern enemy for military purposes, the movement became a general strike against the slave system on the part of all who could find opportunity. The trickling streams of fugitives swelled to a flood. 
Once begun, the general strike of black and white went madly and relentlessly on like some great saga. The next large-scale general strike took place over half a century later in Belgium, in an effort to force the government to grant universal suffrage to the people. However, there were periodical strikes throughout the 19th century that could loosely be considered as general strikes. In the United States, the Philadelphia General Strike of 1835 lasted for three weeks, after which the striking workers won their goal of a 10-hour workday and an increase in wages. Later general strikes include the 1877 St. Louis General Strike, which grew out of the events of the Great Railroad Strike of 1877 across the United States and the 1892 New Orleans General Strike. The year of 1919 saw a cascade of general strikes around the world as a result of the political convulsions caused by the First World War, in Germany, Belfast, Seattle and Winnipeg. The Russian Revolution of 1905 saw a massive wave of social unrest across the Russian Empire, characterized by large-scale general strikes on the part of the industrial workers. The 1926 United Kingdom general strike started in the coal industry and rapidly escalated. The unions called out 1,750,000 workers, mainly in the transport and steel sectors, although the strike was successfully suppressed by the government. Topic: Rosa Luxemburg At the turn of the 20th century, Belgium was particularly prone to large-scale strike actions, with at least four mass strikes occurring in 1886, 1887, 1891, and 1893. In 1886, there was the Walloon Jacquerie of 1886, but without an actual leading political organisation. The final strike was the Belgian General Strike of 1893 mentioned above. In 1902, the Belgian Labour Party launched another strike, which failed. Many German Social Democrats thought such an experiment was absurd. Drachkovich observed that German socialists were against the general strike because, under the Kaiser, supporting it was not very safe. Rosa Luxemburg, in her 1906 book The Mass Strike, The Political Party and the Trade Unions had a different view, criticizing the Belgian Labour Party for perceived tactical incompetence. A general strike forged in advance within the fetters of legality is like a war demonstration with cannons dumped into a river within the very sight of the enemy. Karl E. Shorsky wrote about the same Belgian phenomenon studied by Luxemburg as well as the German opposition to it. In German social democratic circles, the general strike suffered from the hereditary taint of its anarchist origins. Rosa Luxemburg, who studied the Belgian strike, was particularly impressed with its success in activating the political consciousness of the backward portions of the population. She was not yet however, prepared to give it European-wide significance. Luxemburg felt it to be appropriate only in countries in which industry was geographically concentrated. Purpose General strikes have been done in order to seek «democracy, political representation and the provision of basic education and healthcare». In Europe, general strikes were very common in the 19th and early 20th centuries. In Portugal, a general strike has been called by the Federation of Public Labor Unions to avert austerity measures. In Honduras, a general strike was called in 2011 by union workers, farmers, and other organizations demanding better education, an increase in the minimum wage, and against fuel price hikes. In Yemen, thousands of people took the streets in a general strike in 2011 to protest President Ali Abdullah Saleh. In Algeria, public sector workers have mounted a general strike for higher wages and improved working conditions. In February, 1947, General Douglas MacArthur, as Supreme Commander of the Allied Powers in Japan, banned a planned general strike of 2,400,000 government workers, stating that, "...so deadly a social weapon." As the general strike should not be used in the impoverished and emaciated condition of Japan so soon after World War II, Japan's labor leaders complied with his ban. Concept. Ralph Chaplin, editor of the Industrial Workers of the World IWW newspaper Solidarity and later, of the Industrial Worker, identified four levels of general strike A general strike in a community. A general strike in an industry. A national general strike. A revolutionary or class strike. 
The general strike, in the 1905 pamphlet The Social General Strike, published in Chicago in 1905, Stephen Naft had previously acknowledged the same four levels of the general strike. The name, General Strike is often used to designate the strike of all branches in one trade, for instance the general strike of the miners, when helpers and hoisting engineers, etc. are all out. Then it is used as, general strike of a city, i.e., general strike in Florence, or a general strike in a whole country or province, for the purpose of gaining political rights, i.e., the right to vote, as in Belgium, or Sweden. The profoundest conception of the general strike, however, is the one pointing to a thorough change of the present system, a social revolution of the world, an entire new reorganization, a demolition of the entire old system of all governments. Naft's 1905 pamphlet translated from the German language traced existing sentiment for this goal of the general strike to proletarians of Spain and Italy. The premise of the social general strike is that no matter how powerfully the working class organizes itself, it still has no significant power over a congress or the executive which has military force at its beck and call. Therefore, a general strike called by an energetic and enthusiastic minority of workers, may be embraced by the mass of workers who remain unorganized. Thus it may be possible less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 to completely interrupt production in the whole country and stop communication and consumption for the ruling classes and that for a time long enough to totally disorganize the capitalistic society so that after the complete annihilation of the old system the working people can take possession through its labor unions of all the means of production the social general strike noted the complexity of modern industry, identifying the many stages in the manufacturing process and geographic dispersal of related manufacturing locations as weaknesses of the industrial process during any labor dispute. The pamphlet notes the problem of hunger during a general strike, and recommends where warehouses are available for the purpose, that proletarians less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 do the same thing as the ruling classes have done uninterruptedly for thousands of years that is consume without producing this deportment of the ruling classes the working class calls exploitation and if the proletarians do it the possessing classes call it plundering and socialism calls it expropriation however the pamphlet asserts that the immense advantage of the general strike is that it begins entirely lawfully and without any danger for the workers, and for this reason thousands will take part. <laughs> Socialists, anarchists differ on tactics In 1966, in a study of revolutionary socialism, Milorad M. Drachkovich of the Hoover Institution on War, Revolution, and Peace a conservative, libertarian think tank, noted two tactical options which divided late 19th century and early 20th century anarchists from socialists, electoral politics, which the socialists embraced, but anarchists generally opposed, and, the general strike as a mechanism to prevent war, which anarchists supported, but socialists refused to endorse, as a group, the socialists of the period repeatedly rejected the general strike as a tactic, however, a number of socialist leaders advocated its use for one reason or another. Socialist leaders who embraced the general strike tended to see it as an instrument for obtaining political concessions. Drachkovich identified five types of general strikes. The political mass strike, a general strike for political rights, such as the right to vote. The general strike as a revolutionary act that would transform society. The general strike is a «revolutionary exercise» which would eventually lead to a transformation of society. A one-day demonstration general strike on May Day, International Workers Day aimed at identifying a «worldwide proletariat». Commencing in 1891, a theoretical mechanism by which to stop wars between nation states Drachkovich perceived the first two concepts, the socialist-friendly general strike for political rights within the system, and the general strike as a revolutionary mechanism to overthrow the existing order—which he associated with a «rising anarcho-syndicalist movement» as in conflict. Drachkovich believed that the difficulty arose from the fact that the general strike was «one instrument» but was frequently considered, "...without distinction of underlying motives." Milorad M. Drachkovich also observed the variable success of the general strike in actual use 
In Belgium a general strike movement, broken off in one instance without damage to the organizing forces, eventually led to universal suffrage, in Holland a general strike collapsed with disastrous consequences, in Sweden, a general strike was conducted and terminated with disciplined order but did not attain the desired results. In Italy, general strikes had been both socially effective and politically unproductive. On the other hand, the events of January 1905 in Russia once more seemed to underscore the suitability of the general strike as a decisively revolutionary action. Topic: <inaudible> Syndicalism and the general strike. Orthodox labor unions typically act as a representative from the workers to employers. They bargain over wages, hours, and working conditions. Other labor organizations typically bargain for the same wage, hour, and conditions improvements, but embrace a critique of capital as establishing and maintaining a permanent working class and an elite ruling class. These unions therefore advocate a permanent solution to the circumstances of strikes, injunctions, and crossing other workers' picket lines. Given the hierarchical relationships of the existing economic system, these other unions perceive the necessity of a radical change in the social order. In brief, these unions are radical in their orientation, and may accurately be described as revolutionary. One labor movement philosophy of «peaceful revolution» is known as syndicalism. Its tactical method is the strike—the regular strike for protecting the material welfare of the workers, and the general strike as a means to accomplish the desired permanent solution to industrial strife. Syndicalism has been a common union organizing principle in a number of European countries, including France, Spain, and Italy. One variation of syndicalism is anarcho-syndicalism, which in comparison to syndicalism develops rank and file power with democratic traditions to maintain worker control over union leadership. Topic: <laughs> Industrial workers of the world. In the United States, Britain, and to a lesser extent Australia, the trend toward revolutionary unionism culminated in the growth of the Industrial Workers of the World Technically, the IWW is described as a union that practices revolutionary industrial unionism. Some consider the revolutionary industrial unionism of the IWW to be a form of anarcho-syndicalism. Others point out differences, for example, Ralph Chaplin has written, the IWW concept of the general strike differs almost as much from that of the anarcho-syndicalist as from that of the political or craft unionist. In form, structure and objective, the IWW is more all-sufficient, more mature and more modern than any of its anarcho-syndicalist predecessors. The IWW began to fully embrace the general strike in 1910–1911. The ultimate goal of the general strike, according to industrial workers of the world theory, is to displace capitalists and give control over the means of production to workers. In a 1911 speech in New York City, IWW organizer Haywood explained his view of the economic situation, and why he believed a general strike was justified. The capitalists have wealth, they have money. They invest the money in machinery, in the resources of the earth. They operate a factory, a mine, a railroad, a mill. They will keep that factory running just as long as there are profits coming in. When anything happens to disturb the profits, what do the capitalists do? They go on strike, don't they? They withdraw their finances from that particular mill. They close it down because there are no profits to be made there. They don't care what becomes of the working class. But the working class, on the other hand, has always been taught to take care of the capitalists' interest in the property. Bill Haywood believed that industrial unionism made possible the general strike, and the general strike made possible industrial democracy. According to Wobbly theory, the conventional strike is an important but not the only weapon for improving wages, hours, and working conditions for working people. These strikes are also good training to help workers educate themselves about the class struggle, and about what it will take to execute an eventual general strike for the purpose of achieving industrial democracy. During the final general strike, workers would not walk out of their shops, factories, mines, and mills, but would rather occupy their workplaces and take them over. Prior to taking action to initiate industrial democracy, workers would need to educate themselves with technical and managerial knowledge in order to operate industry. According to labor historian Philip S. Foner, the wobbly conception of industrial democracy is intentionally not presented in detail by IWW theorists, in that sense, the details are left to the 
future development of society. However, certain concepts are implicit. Industrial democracy will be a new society built within the shell of the old. Members of the industrial union educate themselves to operate industry according to democratic principles, and without the current hierarchical ownership management structure. Issues such as production and distribution would be managed by the workers themselves. In 1927, the IWW called for a three day nationwide walkout in essence, a demonstration general strike to protest the execution of anarchists Ferdinando Nicola Sacco and Bartolomeo Vanzetti. The most notable response to the call was in the Walsenburg Coal District of Colorado, where 1,132 miners stayed off the job, and only 35 went to work, a participation rate which led directly to the Colorado Coal Strike of 1927. On March 18, 2011, the Industrial Workers of the World website supported an endorsement of a general strike as a follow-up to protests against Governor Scott Walker's proposed labor legislation in Wisconsin, following a motion passed by the South Central Federation of Labor of Wisconsin endorsing a statewide general strike as a response to those legislative proposals. The SCFL website states, at SCFL's monthly meeting Monday, February 21, delegates endorsed the following, "...the SCFL endorses a general strike, possibly for the day Walker signs his budget repair bill." An ad hoc committee was formed to explore the details. SCFL did not call for a general strike because it does not have that authority. Reaction of Orthodox labor The year 1919 saw a number of general strikes throughout North America, including two that were considered significant—the Seattle General Strike, and the Winnipeg General Strike. While the IWW participated in the Seattle General Strike, that action was called by the Seattle Central Labor Union, affiliated with the American Federation of Labor (AFL), predecessor of the AFL-CIO. In June 1919, the AFL National Organization, in session in Atlantic City, New Jersey, passed resolutions in opposition to the general strike. The official report of these proceedings described the convention as the largest and in all probability the most important convention ever held," by the organization, in part for having engineered the "...overwhelming defeat of the so-called radical element," via crushing a "...one big union proposition," and also for defeating a proposal for a nationwide general strike, both "...by a vote of more than 20 to 1." The AFL amended its constitution to disallow any central labor union i.e., regional labor councils from taking a strike vote without prior authorization of the national officers of the union concerned." The change was intended to "...check the spread of general strike sentiment and prevent recurrences of what happened at Seattle and is now going on at Winnipeg." The penalty for any unauthorized strike vote was revocation of that body's charter. <laughs> Notable general strikes The largest general strike that ever stopped the economy of an advanced industrial country, and the first general wildcat strike in history, was May 1968 in France. The prolonged strike involved 11 million workers for two weeks in a row, and its impact was such that it almost caused the collapse of the de Gaulle government. Other notable general strikes include 494 BC, the Aventine Secession, Ancient Rome, creating the Tribune of the Plebs, 449 BC, a secessia plebis leading to the adoption of the Twelve Tables 287 BC, a secessia plebis leading to the adoption of the Lex Hortensia note, plebeian secession, was a tactic used by the Roman plebs of vacating a city entirely and leaving its ruling elite to fend for itself, thus an even more radical action than a «general strike», yet unlike the latter term, it does not pertain to withholding labor within a wage system. General strikes in the current sense of the term only begin to take place in a context where in which labor is treated as a commodity, and wage workers collectively organize to halt production 1835–1835 Philadelphia General Strike, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania 1842–1842 General Strike, Great Britain 1862 to 1865 the plantation general strike in the confederate states of the us 
1877, St. Louis General Strike, St. Louis, Missouri, an outgrowth of the Great Railroad Strike of 1877 in the United States 1886, Walloon Jacquerie of 1886 Wallonia 1892, New Orleans General Strike, New Orleans, Louisiana, U.S. 1893, Belgian General Strike of 1893, Belgium 1902, Geneva General Strike of 1902, Switzerland 1905, The Great October Strike, Russia, see 1905 Russian Revolution. World's largest general strike. 1907, Geneva General Strike of 1907, Switzerland 1907, New Orleans Levy General Strike, United States 1909, a general strike coupled with a major uprising in Barcelona 1909, Swedish general strike of 1909 1909, uprising of the 20,000, New York, New York, U.S. 1912, Brisbane general strike, Australia 1912, Zurich general strike of 1912, Switzerland 1917, Australian general strike 1917, Brazilian general strike 1917, Spanish general strike 1918, Swiss general strike 1919, Barcelona general strike, Spain 1919, Winnipeg general strike, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada 1919, Seattle general strike, Seattle, Washington, U.S. 1919, general strike in Basel and Zurich 1919, Switzerland 1920, general strike in Germany to stop Kapp Putsch 1920, Romanian general strike 1922, Italian general strike 1920, German passive resistance strikes at the Ruhr 1926, UK general strike of 1926 1933, French general strike of 1933 1932, Geneva general strike of 1932, Switzerland 1934, West Coast Longshoremen strike, U.S. 1934, Minneapolis Teamsters strike, U.S. 1934, Toledo Auto Light strike, U.S. 1936, Palestinian general strike 1936, French general strike of 1936 1936, Syrian general strike 1938, French general strike of 1938 1941, February strike, Netherlands 1942, Luxembourgish general strike 1946, Indian general strike 1946, Oakland General Strike, Oakland, California 1950, Austrian General Strikes 1950, General Strike against Leopold III of Belgium 1953, Hartle 1953, Salon 1954, General Strike of 1954, Honduras 1956, Finnish General Strike 1958, Bahamas General Strike 1960–1961 Winter General Strike in Belgium 1968, French General Strike 1972, Quebec General Strike 1973, Uruguayan General Strike 1974, Ulster Workers' Council Strike, Northern Ireland 1975, Icelandic Women's Strike 1976 to 1976 St John General Strike 1978-1979 Strikes during Iranian Revolution 1984 Uruguayan General Strike 1988 Spanish General Strike 1989 2 hour general strike of all citizens of Czechoslovakia during the Velvet Revolution 1992 Nepalese General Strike 1995, French public sector strikes 1995, Days of Action, Canada 2000, Cocobamba general strike, Bolivia 2002, Italian general strike 2002–2003, Venezuelan general strike 2005, Bolivian gas conflict 2006, April 2006 Nepalese general strike 2007, Guinea general strike 2009, French Caribbean general strikes 2010, Spanish general strike 
2012 European general strike 2012 Spanish general strike the 29th of March 2013 Slovenian public sector general strike 2016 Indian general strike of 2016 2017 the 3rd of October Catalan independentists general strike 2017 to 8 November Catalan independentists general strike 2018 Iranian general strike topic see also Secession plebis Hartle Stay away Direct action Occupation of factories Workers' self-management Georges Sorel List of strikes Industrial unionism Industrial workers of the world National syndicalism Footnotes Further reading Henry L. Slobodin, "'The General Strike", International Socialist Review, Vol. 17, No. 6 December 1916, pp. 353–355. External links Chronology of General Strikes the Mass Strike by Rosa Luxemburg 1906. General Strike 1842 from Chartists.net, downloaded 5 June 2006. From Reflections on Violence Strike. Famous Worker Uprisings — Slideshow by Life magazine. Strikes and You from the National Alliance for Worker and Employer Rights Seattle General Strike Project Oakland 1946. Project